All right, guys, we are back talking about the MacBook Pro M3 Max once again. This is my second video on this laptop because there's a lot to discover on this thing. Now, anyway, my previous video I did was comparing it against the M1 Max MacBook Pro and the M2 Max Mac Studio, which I have here. Now, in terms of the specs on the M3 Max MacBook Pro that I have with me, it is fully decked out. In the previous video, I did some rendering tests in DaVinci Resolve, and the uh, results were actually quite interesting. As a matter of fact, they were so interesting, I contacted Blackmagic here in Singapore because they have an office, and they talked to the Resolve team to find out what was going on. Well, their findings after a week were like, we don't see any issues on our side. So fair enough. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to test it further. Based on your comments on the previous video, if you want to check that out, click, click on this card right here. and. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play back a red uh, 8K footage from the Red V Raptor. I've done some grading on this. I've done some effects via nodes on DaVinci Resolve. By the way, this is the latest version, 18.6.3 versus the previous one, which is 18.6.2. So we'll see if there's any differences in that re regard. Also, we're going to try Cinebench and Blender, all the latest releases as well to see what the scores are because I was watching some videos on YouTube and some of the numbers were quite questionable that some of the reviewers are giving out. Not to say that they were doing anything wrong, but maybe they were just, I don't know how they were calculating it, but the numbers on the screen speak for themselves and you're gonna see that right now. So with that guys, let's do our first test with DaVinci Resolve. So let's get down to it. Let's take a look at here. We're showing you just in terms of the nodes, what we got going on, noise reduction, we've got glow, we've got uh, relighting happening. We've got vignettes. We got some color grading as well. So again, I'm throwing a few things into this one minute clip and these are various different clips here. You actually can see from the uh, media pool here what I've got going on here. So these are various different clips. Big thanks to my friend Peter Choi, AKA Los Kuma. You can actually check him out on Instagram. This is from a test shoot that he did with the AKV Raptor. And so big thanks to him for allowing me to use this footage for this test here because I don't own a red camera. But we are now in high quality, uh, preferred camera originals on this. And let's go back and let's play it. Smooth. If I want to scroll through the timeline here. So speed ramping, transition. As you can see, it is very, very smooth. There's no issues at all with this. So what we're going to do now is render this out and we're going to go to ProRes. Let's do Apple ProRes here. And let's do ProRes 422. 780 by 4320 8K Ultra HD. And we're gonna add this to the rendering queue here. And let's give it a shot. All right, guys, so we are back after that render. The time to complete it was 11 minutes and 50 seconds. There's a lot to these files, okay? There's a lot of effects to these files and it does a decent job. Now let's do H.265. And then let's see how this goes for the render. All right, so we are just about done with this render here. It's got about 49 seconds remaining on this, and it's been chugging along pretty well. I mean, the fans have been on the entire time with this. Same with the ProRes version. The fans did kick on and stayed on pretty consistently on this. Okay, so the final time on this is 11 minutes and 23 seconds. So ProRes was 11 minutes and 50 seconds. H.265 was 11 minutes and 23 seconds for this one minute clip here with red raw AK footage from the V Raptor. Big thanks to Peter Choi once again, AKA Los Kuma for the test footage. And that gives you guys an idea of what to expect on this. All right, guys, let's jump into Cinebench right now here. And this is the latest version to a 2024.1.0. So you're seeing it here on the display as well. So you guys are gonna see what I'm gonna see here on this. And so what we're gonna do is run this through a series of the three tests. Uh, the GPU, CPU, and the CPU single core as well. Now, this is going to take about 10 minutes to go through all this stuff. So this test will take some time. So I'll come back towards the, at the end of this uh, session to give you all the numbers. And you can see all the numbers with screenshots as well. So you get an idea of how this performs. All right. So we're done with Cinebench. And let's look at the scores here. For GPU, we've got 12,703 points. And if we're going to compare that to, well, compared to the AMD Radeon Pro W6800, that is at 9,643. 
And compared to the Apple M1 Ultra Metal, that's it coming in at 5,968. So there is definitely a significant difference when it comes to the GPU. Now we go to CPU multi-core. It is slightly above the Apple M1 Ultra. This is coming in at 1,687 and the Apple M1 Ultra is coming in at 1,625. So again, um, slight increase there. And I guess the Apple M2 Ultra would be right in the same ballpark as well. So just to take that in consideration. And then let's go to single core CPU here. The M3 Max comes in at 139 at the Apple M1 Max 113, Apple M1 Ultra 113, Apple M1 112. So there's an increase in that. And of course, compared to the um, the AMD and Intel counterparts, well, there's really not much of a comparison on this. The uh, M3 Max definitely does come ahead on this. So um, there are the scores for Cinebench. Again, this is the latest version of Cinebench, and this is this most specced out MacBook Pro M3 Max. So I'm not too sure what other YouTubers are getting in terms of scores, but these, these are the scores I'm getting with my machine here. All right, with that, we're going to jump into Blender right now, and we're going to take a look at some numbers here. Now, this is Blender 4.0 Release Candidate 4.02 to be re exact, just to give you guys an idea of what we're looking at here. And we're going to go into Preferences, make sure everything is set up. Apple M3 Max, GPU 40 cores. Let me just focus this so you guys can actually see it. I'm actually got a camera right behind me so you guys know that I'm actually doing this in real time here. And uh, we're gonna do some testing on that. Kernel op optimization full, metal RT auto on that. And we can turn it on if you wanna just turn it on to make sure we got everything going. Because I saw another YouTuber who came out with some interesting numbers, like 19 seconds thereabouts or something, 16 seconds. I don't know how they got their numbers, but we are going to find out with that. We're gonna go to classroom blend. This is one of the tests that this other YouTuber did. So we're gonna do this here and we're gonna go function 12 and we're gonna rock and roll this right now. All right guys, so we just finished up with Blender and the time to render this entire scene is three minutes, 26.22 seconds. So there you have it. i um, not too sure how somebody got 19 seconds previously on this, but uh, yeah. So that's it kind of for uh, Blender and uh, Cinebench to give you guys some ideas and some numbers on that and of course DaVinci Resolve. So now we're gonna jump into Lightroom and Photoshop to kind of give you guys an idea how it performs with some 100 megapixel medium format images. Let's jump into Lightroom real quick here. Bump a little clarity in this. Everything is very smooth. Again, this is the same on the M1 Max, so there's not much of a real difference in that way, but you'll see in terms of plugins, how it performs with Photoshop, it actually does a very, very good job. Um, very impressed overall with this. Um, is it a huge difference from the M1 Max? And the answer is not necessarily. It is, um, you definitely do notice a difference, but it's not going to be like night and day, like, wow, okay, I need to upgrade from my M1 Max to the M3 Max or M2 Max to the M3 Max, not necessarily. It is definitely noticeable, but um, you know, I mean, you still can definitely get the job done either way. Now let's bring this into Photoshop. These are a couple of shots I've taken from a friend of mine, Alan, the other night, to just give you an idea in terms of the size, 208.22 megabytes. And it is a raw file from the Fujifilm GFX 102. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I've done a little bit of an edit on this uh, previously. I'm using Rayala Ace as the profile, just done some edits and some masking on this. And uh, yeah, I mean, everything is very smooth. And this is the latest version of Photoshop, Photoshop Beta. And I've got some plugins here that I use from Retouch for me. And uh, you do notice a difference in terms of speed on this. So let's go into Heal as it opens up. Progress on this, let's just zoom in. And what's original. So taking away some of the spots on this face. Apply, happy with that. Again, these are plugins going into play. There's a lot going into this and we're gonna go into Mattifier here. These plugins are great by the way, but I use these a lot for portraiture because it does save a lot of time. As you're gonna see within a couple of minutes, I'm gonna have this thing pretty much edited where I want it to be. And uh, I'm gonna zoom in on that. The face, original, taking away the shine there. I can go a little bit more if I wanna do that, apply. Then I do a little bit of uh, dodge and burn. Again, I'm just showing you how plugins perform on this and it's really quick overall, I have to say. Progress is coming into play on that. Now, it can be aggressive at times, so you can bring this down a little bit if you wanna make it more natural, but you have to each their own on that. So I can bring that there. And then I go into a skin tone to match the skin tone to make sure that it matches to his neck. Again, I'm just showing you this these plugins to give you an idea. 
So this is the skin tone, balancing out the skin tone on his face. And again, you can bring it up or down, however you want to do it. it just sort of uh, balances out the skin tone. Hit apply. Then we add a little bit of uh, portrait volume to kind of give a little bit more depth to the, uh, the face overall. They have a lot of other tools for eyes and for backgrounds, et cetera, et cetera. But these are the tools I use mainly for portraiture. So as we uh, jump in on this, you go in here so you can actually see the difference in terms of how it contours the face a bit. Apply. Great. Then we go into this sponge. We want to saturate his lips a bit. You're seeing how I'm doing a bit of a touch up here. Bring that in. And then we want to do the eyes. There's actually a tool they have for the eyes. I don't have that with me here for this, for these plugins yet, but just to give you an idea of how it performs. And then of course, we can go into the remove tool, which I use quite often. The remove tool has become a very, very good tool for Photoshop. As a matter of fact, might be one of the most useful tools they've come out with recently on this. Give you an idea of how it looks, but Again, it runs very, very smooth. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for the Photoshop test here. Again, you can do a lot with this machine. It is very powerful and for photographers out there. I don't think it's uh, a big necessity to jump from an M1 to an M3. You are gonna see a difference in terms of speed. I do notice a difference even from my M2 Max, Max Studio for that matter, but it's not a huge difference. Um, so for the most part, I think if you're into photography primarily, your machine will last you a little bit longer. But when you get into video, that's where things get a little bit more interesting and, and a little bit more challenging because if you're rendering large files that are gonna take up to 24 hours thereabouts or you know maybe even less, but it just takes a long time Time, and you can save 15, 20% in terms of rendering time, that's when it's gonna be a, a reason to upgrade. But for the more general audience out there, look, if you're coming from an Intel machine, this is a no brainer. Pick this up, you will be blown away by the speed. If you're coming from a PC and you're like, look, I wanna get into the Mac system, I'm hearing a lot about these, this Apple Silicon, how good is it? Here you go, guys. You will be very, very impressed with the performance of this. I just wish it had more ports. But I say that for every MacBook Pro review I do. I wish Apple would put more ports in this. Close to what we would get on the Mac Studio. Of course, obviously, size and configurations are a little bit different, but it would be nice to have. Anyway, those are my thoughts on part two of this MacBook Pro M3 Max video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I will be taking this to a production house very soon. They'll be running it through its paces in a real world scenario, not just benchmarks and tests like I'm doing here, but to actually take it through, through its paces and we'll see how the performance goes in that way. But with that, guys, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well, hit that notification bell. More content coming your way. Thanks again for the support and I'll chat to you soon.